Hello! Today we will be making pinch sculptures out of clay. We will also be covering the topics of form and texture. I'll be sculpting a dog in the sample, but you can choose any animal with a head, tail, four legs, and texture. I'm setting up my table with a thin piece of paper. I've also got a small uh, bowl of water with only a tiny bit of finger width of water at the very bottom. I'm starting with a lump of modeling clay. And the very first thing we're going to do is to roll it into a ball using our hands. Don't use the table or the paper on the table because that will suck the moisture out of the clay. We want to handle the clay as little as possible because it will dry out the more that you handle it. So I'm just checking it once and I've got a nice smooth ball here. So take your clay and roll it into a ball. Next, we're going to gently pinch out the amount of clay we will need for the head of our animal. We're not separating it into a separate ball, we're just gently pinching the amount of clay that we will need to make the head. And that's about enough here. And remember, we're not making any small details like the face or the eyes or texture right now. We'll be adding those later, we're just getting the simple shapes to begin. As you work with clay, sometimes small cracks or bumps form. Just gently smooth them out as you go, with your thumbs, fingers, or small tools. Remember shape and smooth, shape and smooth as you go. Next, we'll be forming the legs. You can use your fingers for this or small tools. To start, pinch out enough clay that you'll need for all four legs at once. Do this by turning your animal upside down and pinching out the clay you'll need for all four legs. Then, taking your finger or a small tool, Divide that amount of clay in half. Then divide that in half again, and you can start to form the four legs, and they will all be the same size because you divide it in half and divide it in half again, which gives you four equal parts. One, two, three, and four. We're not making perfectly formed legs at this point. We're just getting the clay in the right place so that when we do uh, shape and smooth, it will already be in the right place ready to go. Now, notice the size of the legs and the neck. They are short and stubby. There's nothing here that's long and skinny like a pencil. Even if you're making a giraffe's neck or a mermaid tail, you want to make sure that it stays short and stubby. If you make it too long or too skinny, it's just going to break off. That's just the, what happens to clay when you put it in the kiln. It becomes brittle and pieces break off. Remember, short and stubby. This next section I like to call shaping and smoothing. That's where you look around, you're looking for cracks or bumps or unevenness in your clay, and you're using your fingertips or small tools and you're gently smoothing out any cracks or bumps as you, as you find them, and you're also um, shaping as you go. Here I'm switching to a clay tool. This is actually a pencil if you can't recognize it. I'm using a pencil so that you can see, even if you don't have clay tools at all at home or at school, uh, there's always an object that you can find nearby that can work as a clay tool. In this case, uh, I'm using a pencil. I like that it has a point. I like that it has uh, a rounded area toward the top that allows me to roll the pencil around each leg. Now, you're not going to want to use this as an actual pencil when you're done because it will gum up your pencil sharpeners. But you can use it as a clay tool uh, permanently. Just save it in a box somewhere. Please note that I'm not making the legs uh, very skinny. I'm keeping them short and stubby so that they will not break off. If you do have an accident later where a piece breaks off after it's been fired, it can be glued on, but glue is not always available, so I wouldn't count on that. Next, I will be uh, shaping the snout. The snout is the part of the animal uh, that comes forward, so that includes the nose and the mouth. I'm not adding the nose and mouth details, I'm just pulling a little bit forward uh, to form the snout. Next, I'll be forming the tail. I'm pinching in the back of the animal, and I'm pulling out gently to form a tail. You can pause this video at any time, by the way, if you need to work on a step. Now, if you get any cracks in your animal that are too deep uh, to just smooth out with your finger, or if it's getting uh, too dry that you can't work with it properly anymore, pieces are starting to come off, this is what you need to do. You take your fingertips and you gently dip into the water, just barely on your fingertips, 
and you can use that to smooth out those cracks and bumps. Be very careful not to get your clay sculpture too wet or it will just turn to mush and that is not a, a good idea for your sculpture. Next, the face details. I'm using a pencil tip, starting to form the ears here. This is the very start of adding details. I'm not getting super detailed. Still, I'm pulling aside clay that I need for the parts of the face. Pinching out an ear. I'll come back to those ears later. Just getting the clay that I need. Next, I'll be scratching in the tip of the nose. I'm just using an upside down triangle shape for the nose. Just looks like a V right now. I'm going to scratch basically a smushed W underneath the V for the mouth. This will also work for a cat or a rabbit. I'm going to scratch above the nose and now it's starting to look like a dog's nose. using my finger to smooth it out as I go, not pressing too hard. For the eyes, since this sculpture is so small, I'm just keeping it simple. I'm taking the pencil point and I am poking in uh, two hollow areas for the eyes. And I'm smoothing those out with my finger just a little bit. I can come back uh, to other areas to increase the detail. Maybe put in a couple rolls or skin folds under the neck. We're finishing up the shaping and smoothing and we're moving into the details section. And I think I'll add a little more shape to these ears. I'm going to lift that up, press it down. I'm going to lift that up and press it down. This next small section is if you are doing a dog or a cat or a similar animal that has paws uh, instead of hooves or other type of feet. So if you're doing a horse or a pig, um, this section isn't for you. I'm taking my pencil tool and I'm cutting away in between uh, the each of the toes. And I'm pinching it back together gently and smoothing it out. If you're doing a different type of animal, you can come up with a different solution on how to do your feet details. One of our last steps will be to add texture. Remember, texture is how something feels. You can see I'm beginning to scratch in a texture here. However, if I try to feel this texture now, it's still going to feel like smooth clay. We won't actually be able to feel this texture until the clay object has been fired in the kiln. So as you can see, I'm using a tool with a scratch tip. A pencil has a very small tip and works great for scratching. Other tools like paper clips and things with a small tip work well as well. And Think about the direction that you want the fur to go, or the direction you want the scales to go. And think about uh, the, so the sides of the animal, the legs, things where you might be able to feel something different. In the case of a dog, it's all mostly going to be uh, wispy fur. I'm drawing fur in the shape that I, in the direction that I think the fur will be going. So I'm having it go to the back of the animal and down the legs. To the back of the tail. These will be directions that I'll be um, choosing for the dog fur. If you're doing scales, uh, you can do a uh, C shape, a C turned to its side, repeated over and over to make scales for a dinosaur. For a turtle, you can do um, repeated, uh, sort of like rounded rectangles on the top. You can do a repeated pattern to create a turtle shell pattern. Other types of animal with fur, you can uh, use some tips that you see here for the fur. Lots of things that you can do with detail with uh, texture, and texture makes a big difference. You add it at the very end because if you handle 
your animal uh, after you put the texture on it. The texture will just get smashed out, start to flatten out. You can do a little bit of shaping and smoothing left if you need to, but then you have to go up and back and touch up some texture in that area. Adding some texture to the nose, just a few scratches on the face to show that the uh, face also has texture. You don't want to put too much texture in the face because then your details that you added in the face might start to get lost a little bit. Adding some texture to the legs, texture to the head. and texture to the tail. By now our animal's looking pretty good, but there is one very important thing that we need to do, and that is to make sure that our sculpture is going to get back to us. Now what I have my students do is clear out a section on the stomach. I'm just rolling the tip of a pencil, and you can smooth that out with your finger we're creating a small surface um, to write on. Now for my students, uh, we're going to have them write their initials, the first letter of their first name and the first letter of their last name. You use a very um, small tip to do this. You kind of scratch it out and you can smooth it a tiny bit with your finger. Now, the reason why we are putting our initials on here or some other identifying code that uh, you and your teacher know is so that your clay piece can get back to you. Because as much as you think that, oh, I made the most perfect dog and of course I'll remember which one's mine, there's always four or five students who cannot remember which clay piece belongs to them. But if you put your initials or whatever code that your classroom has, uh, you'll for sure be able to say, well, this dog sort of looks like mine, but I'm not, and you turn it over to the bottom. Oh. There's my initials. This one is definitely mine. So do not forget this step. This is a very important step. All right, we've got all the steps finished for the first day of our clay sculptures. These will be collected. They will be put into the fiery kiln. And when they come back, they will be hardened. And you'll be able to feel that texture and move on to the next step. Okay, welcome back. Your clay objects have been fired, they've been taken out of the kiln, and they are now a lot more hard, like stone, but they're more breakable than stone, so do not drop them. But first, let's have a discussion. What do you think will be the same painting on a 3D object? You've painted on a 2D surface before, we've done drawing and we've done painting on paper. What do you think will be the same, and what do you think will be different when we paint on a 3D surface? If you finish a little bit early, try drawing your object on a separate piece of paper, carefully observing the line and shape. You can also put your animal in an environment, for example this polar bear with an igloo behind it. If you have even more time, make your object look 3D by adding form, fading from dark to light to create the shadows. 